Hey guys, welcome to my video today. Today I want to show you this these new pens that I got. They're from Marabou. They're called the Aqua Pen. They're a watercolor felt tip pen. And I'm just going to show you the back so you can see how to use them. Brilliant colors thanks to high quality light, fast, and low odor. They don't smell at all, by the way. Watercolor based pigment ink. Double tips. So on either end there's a tip. We have a, a slim tip and then we have a brush tip here. And then it asks you to use watercolor paper with these. So they are specifying what kind of paper they really want you to use in order to get the best effect from these markers. So these pens claim to be watercolor markers. So you can use, say, for instance, a water brush. You can use this with your marker after you draw it. So I did swatch these here. I did this off camera. I basically did everything off camera. I wasn't planning on doing a review of these, but I've been using them for a day now pretty um, heavily. And I just wanted to give you my two cents on these. You know, there are some pros and cons, and I have some mixed feelings about them. The first thing I will say is they were incredibly inexpensive. I paid $12 and change for a package of 12. And the reason this is great is because I can go into the art store when I don't need anything and there's nothing on my list and I can walk out with a treat. So that's basically what these were about for me. I thought, you know, 12, 13 bucks, no problem for a nice set of 12 markers which is awesome. I was looking for the Koi markers, which I actually don't know as of this taping, whether or not, or filming rather, whether or not um, those are watercolor brushes, but I was really looking for those. And um, they didn't have them, but they did have these in a display. So I think they may be a new product because I've never seen them before. So I thought, hey, give these a shot, you know? So I did swatches of them all here for you and for me. And as you can see, there's varying amount of um, watercolor action that you get from each brush. Some of them don't act very watercolor at all, and some of them are good. The dark blue is great. The dark green is great. The darker colors, by and large, are good, and the brighter ones, but this brown is not so hot. They seem to be less apt to watercolor the longer they sit, So, except for some of those darker colors. But for instance, this light blue is a challenging color for watercolor. The red, on the other hand, is good. But by and large, they do tend to be less apt to watercolor action the longer they sit on the page. So I tried them out in a bunch of different ways, and I'm gonna show you some of those ways. So here's a page from a coloring book I'm working on, and this is just a piece of copy paper. As you can see, it's really thin. It's maybe like 30 pound or something. It's really, really not good paper for doing this on, but you know, wanted to give them a fair test on different types of paper. So you can't see here, but I did try to mix and overlap two colors, but adding water to this paper did absolutely nothing. So when they say use with watercolor paper, they really mean it. I also filled out a very large area with light blue, and that was the first time that I noticed that when you're using the brush tip, the brush tip just turned to mush pretty much when you use it a lot. So it just doesn't really hold up. And I've had this issue with other markers in the set over the past day when I've been using these, but the tip just does not hold up the very, very tip, you just you totally lose it. So just kind of turns to a soggy Q-tip, which is a bummer. There are pros and cons, so that's just one thing. I probably wouldn't use them on this paper again. I thought that they pretty much stunk on this paper, but I did manage to do this entire coloring with these markers, as well as with some other stuff, such as this Bistro marker. That's that for this one. Another way I tried them just all together as sort of a mix. So I did all of the base lettering in the dark blue color. And the dark blue color is a very vibrant, uh, rich color. It works great with water. I really liked the dark blue. 
So as you can see, I added some of these other colors in different areas, and then I used the water to brush over it. As you can see, there's varying results. What I recommend you do is you do your drawing dry, and then you paint them. And then if you want, you can pick up from where you laid down a lot of the ink, and you can use that to paint in other areas. But don't draw over wet with these because it doesn't work sometimes. The ink will not flow at all. And then other times it will just immediately bleed. I'm gonna show you a positive effect on that. Like I think this came out really cool. This is where I dabbed the red on top of wet paper, but that doesn't always come out quite that nice. <laughs> you know, it just, it doesn't come out that nice all the time. Sometimes you get this weird muddy stuff here and um, I tried to cover it up with more, with other brush marks and stuff. And then you get this brown here. I did the brown ink and it just kind of came out muddy and weird. So don't use them on wet paper. Do all your drawing first and then paint later. And on this one, what I did also was I used Posca white pen over the letters. I also used the Uniball Signo pen, which is a white ball pen, gel pen. So you can draw with a white pen over the letters, but as you can see, and with this dark blue ink, it pretty much sopped it all up. So it's a pretty faded out white. It's not a deep, rich white. The white ink pretty much sunk into the dark ink and it's a much more subtle effect. I actually like the way it came out. And actually the moisture on the paper may have also had something to do with it. So definitely factor in the fact that this is, for, let's see, yes, we're using the B watercolor paper. 140 pound paper, ink really sunk in there. I really like how this came out. I think it came out awesome. So I'm happy with that. Okay, so this is another image that I did. So in this one, I did all black ink. And what I did here was inked everything using just black. And then I drew with my brush pen. I picked up where the ink was and I used it to paint. And I really love the effect of this. So this is a really cool technique. I think this would be cool to try with different colors and with a mix of colors. So imagine this, but like different colors and then you can paint with different colors in different places. It would be really, really pretty. So these are great for that. Like, so if you're gonna keep the colors separate, like for certain techniques, I think these are cool, you know? And then for certain other ones, it's kind of like, uh, you know? But I have to also say, one of the really cool things about buying cheap art supplies, and I'm not gonna say these are crap because they're totally not crap, okay? They're just, they're just not like really nice, art supplies, right? They're really middle of the road. And the price is really cheap and um, they do a nice job. I mean, the cool thing is I could give these to my niece and nephew who are seven and they'd feel like really fancy, like they're using art supplies from the art store. But um, you know, I could buy them their own sets and they could just like have fun with it. And I wouldn't have to worry about them destroying the tip or anything because they could just keep their own set and they could kill them if they wanted to. You know what I mean? That's totally fine because they're only 12, 12 or 13 bucks and um, they could have fun with them. I wouldn't have to worry about them using my pens that, you know, when they use them, I'm like, oh, you know, like white knuckling it the whole time when they're using brush tips, right? I'm trying to teach them how to use brush tips and, you know, you need a certain amount of, um, of control, weight pressing control and stuff to do that. And um, I don't like to stress out my uh, niece and nephew too much by being freaky, so. Okay, so here's the last one I did where the first thing I did was I just drew in this really pretty chartreuse color. I just drew all the letters and then I did some highlights on those letters with the blue. So first it was just white. And then I, so I wanted to see how these were gonna play with my Pentel pigment ink brush pen. So I did this entire black underdrawing here, or around rather, not underdrawing, but I drew around all the letters with my brush pen. This is pigment ink. It actually is waterproof when, when dry. You have to wait a while. You can't draw with this and then go into it with water because it will not be waterproof. Even though this ink is waterproof when dry, but you gotta wait till it dries. You gotta give it like a good solid, maybe an hour or something, but you need to like kind of let it cure a little bit. So I drew this entire thing with this pen and then I thought, 
I, since I really, really liked the effect of this, I thought, okay, I'm gonna give it a little shot with here. So I went over some of the areas with my black aqua pen, which, you know, that's just cool. I just love this one. So um, I thought, hey, maybe I can get something similar with this. And you know what I thought, maybe I should have done portions of this ink with just this pen, but I didn't and that's okay. So I used this for some detailing and then I went over it with water. And this shade of black is a little bit different than this shade of black, which is totally fine. This one seems to have a little bit more like, I don't know, of a red in it when it's wet, but then it does dry pretty neutral. So, so I used the black and I thought it still looked kinda uh. So I tried some blue areas and some green. First I tried the green and the green over the ink, it actually did wash out pretty well. For some reason, they don't always, and I think it might really depend on the paper you use, because they did absolutely nothing on this paper, like in terms of water. There was zero wash happening when I put water on this paper. And then this is watercolor paper, which is what they recommend, but still the blue didn't do it. So if you look closer, you'll see that, maybe you'll see, hopefully you'll see. Um, this area, you can actually still see where I made the marks. It didn't wash out. So the light blue really didn't perform in terms of the watercolor wash. The green performed pretty good. Um, the dark colors and the really brights do perform really well so far with the wash, you know, after you draw them. Again, I wouldn't wait. I wouldn't wait too long to um, decide to do a watercolor wash with these because they just don't like that very much. And then this paper is the mixed media. It's the B mixed media paper. So this is mixed media, 93 pounds paper. There's the cover if you wanna look for it in the store. So this paper is suitable for light washes of water. It's not watercolor paper. It's not super, super heavy, but it's good for like a light wash. And um, as you can see, it's done a little bit of rippling here because I did have some pools of water on here. I really think that this is very um, dependent on the color that you use. I guess if I have to categorize these, I will put these into a category. I'll put these into a category. I think one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. Okay, I'm missing some. They're not all equal. You know what I'm saying? So I just, you know, I wasn't like nuts about them. I think these colors here, let's go back. These colors do really well with the water. These colors are okay with the water and these colors kind of stink with the water. This one was probably the best of the three. The yellow is sort of like useless in a way. Oh, I also think the tip points are slightly useless. They just, they're kind of dry. I don't know. I mean, I guess that's okay. Not useless, not useless. They're just, they're a little drier than you would expect them to be, I think. I think I'm missing a pen still. But anyway, I just wanted to let you guys experience these with me. And I wanted to let you know how they went because I was super excited to try them. And I actually would buy them again. I don't let how much something costs drive my purchase because I really think that a lot of stuff that's more expensive is better quality. And a lot of my favorite art supplies are more expensive ones. You know, I really do think that um, price equates quality for a large part in the, in the world of art supplies. But I do think that these have a place. I do think that these have value. This is how I feel about Marabou. And I have the Marabou art crayons as well. They make really good additions to another collection. So I have other art crayons similar to Marabou, but they're by Faber-Castell, or I could use them with my Neo Color um, Caran d'Ache, both of which I love those both. But um, the Marabou ones just, they're not, the colors aren't quite as sophisticated. The pigment isn't quite as rich but you do get a lot of product and they're really good for stretching your other supplies out. If you put everything in a bucket, if you have your different brands that you like, higher quality or you like how they perform better or whatever, and then you have your Marabou's, the Marabou's are really good to kind of mix it up. I will say that with these markers, I don't have any other markers like this except for I have one Winsor & Newton, which is a rock star. I got it in the Art Snacks box. But I would buy these again. 
I actually would buy these again for my nephew and niece because I think it would be cool for them to have like real art supplies, you know what I mean? Because I can just give them their own, each their own set and they can just go nuts. For certain markers, I think that these are really good. Like the black, I really like how the black performed. The dark blue was great. The purple was good, but their colors just aren't, there's not a lot to them. Like the purple is pretty thin and so is the brown. Like look at the brown. So you can mix them though, which is nice, but they're kind of one note, I guess is the way you could say. So, you know, in some ways that's good. Like this red is crazy awesome, even though it is one note, but that could, that's why I mixed them here too. Thank you guys so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed this video and now you know a little bit more about what to expect from these Aqua Pens by Marabou Graphics. Aqua Pen Graphics is what they're called. So let me know what your favorite watercolor markers are because I'm in the market for more of these. I don't have any other pens like this. I would like to try out some other brands. The Windsor Newtons I would think about. If you guys say they're awesome, I'll buy them. So. Let me know what you think, and I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.